Hello and welcome to The Hearing. I'm John. And from Chicago's north side, I am Scotto. And before we get to this week's album, I just have a correction from last week. Um, I said that Jay Bentley returned to BR um, for Back to the Unknown, the EP that followed Into the Unknown. But he actually didn't come back until Suffer, their first, their next full album. Tim Gallagos played bass on Back to the Known. Also, Gerwitz wasn't in the band at that point either. He produced Back to the Known, but he didn't come officially come back until um, Suffer. So Greg Hetson Oops. handled all the guitar work on um, um, Back to the Known. Back. Um, also, the coast was clear. <laughs> I was watching. Um, a little interview with um, Greg Gra- Greg Graff, and it was kind of this thing that Blair does Wikipedia fact or fiction, like asking somebody various things on Wikipedia are true or not. Um, and he mentioned that Eddie Vedder sang on the song "Watch It Die" from uh, "Recipe for Hate," like sang a verse of the song. Really? Yeah, he sang. I knew he sang backup on a couple of songs. I didn't know he sang a verse of "Watch It Die," and I know that song well. I just never placed his voice. He actually did a, did a good job of impersonating Graffin. <laughs> All right, and now to this week's album, which is from 2007, Bootwiki, Bootwiki K.S. Oh, yeah, Bootwiki K.S. I'm, I'm changing the pronunciation to what it is on the album. I realized it was different from what I was saying last time, um, and I, because I forgot that the U at the end of a lot of words in Japanese is silent. Um, by Maximum the Hormone. Maximum the Hormone is a Japanese heavy metal band from Hachiyoji, J- T- Tokyo, who are best known for their unconventional and experimental style of alternative metal music. Over the career, they have found success incorporating elements of heavy metal, hardcore punk, hip-hop, punk, pop, and ska into their sound. Stylistically, their music runs the gamut from being dark and serious to ironic and humorous, often with drastic shifts in tempo and mood over the course of a single song. The band's eclectic nature frequently draws comparisons to System of a Down. When asked about the group's name in an interview, guitarist Maximum Narayo stated, Take it as you like. It means anything from the Japanese cuisine for cooking animal innards to the sensation of the maximum amount of your hormones coming to the boil. Although when we go abroad, abroad, people often think it's just sort of some kind of sexual energy drink. (laughs) <laughs> Hormone or horomon is a style of um, yakiniku, Japanese barbecue, where many of the typically discard, discarded internal organs are grilled into bite-sized pieces and eaten. Once again, I'm glad to be a vegetarian. Yeah, it's not, yeah I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I'll try it once. <laughs> Buliki Kais is the band's third studio album. Three tracks uh, from the album went on to be used in two animes, uh, What's Up People and Zitsuba Billy were used as the opening and ending, respectively, of episodes 20 through 37 of Death Note, and the song Akagi, Akagi was used for the anime of the same name. The album was released on March 14th, 2007 by VAP. I couldn't find a producer listed anywhere, so I'm just going to go ahead and assume it was produced by the band. And it features Daisuke on Unclean and lead and backing vocals, Maximum Narayo on guitar, backing, and clean lead vocals, Ue Chan on bass guitar and backing vocals, and now on drums, backing, and lead vocals. Um, reminder, I don't edit any songs into our reviews for copyright reasons, but down in the description, if you're listening to this on YouTube or on our blog at johnandscotto.com, you'll find a link to Buiki Kaiso or Buiki Kai S on, YouTube, on Spotify, so you can listen along if you like. I, if you'd like, I could not find it on YouTube, which is weird. I can usually do that, but not this time. Yeah. On to track one, the title track, Buiki Kai S, which, unfortunately, there are translations on Wikipedia. I have no idea if they're accurate, but I'm just going to go with this. <laughs> it apparently translates to Up From The Ashes. Now, this is a band that I've known about for probably since like 2015, 2016, uh, when I first got into Bandmade. On their YouTube channel, um, Akane the drummer, um, Konami the lead guitarist, and Misa the bassist, recorded these cover videos of you know playing them playing other people's music and Akane covered a Maximum Hormone song so I checked them out um, and they've kind of been a small doses band for me what uh, what songs did they cover? I don't remember which I forgot to check I don't remember which song she covered or what the other two did um, but 
I, I did check into Maximum Hormone after that, and they're a band I like in small doses. Um, back to specifically on this track, I love the harsh guitar tone, and what I'm calling Daisuke's demented goblin voice. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Um, it's also got a great groove. The bass tone is huge. Yeah. Um, there's a section that reminds me, and off and on they do this, remind me a lot of Red Hot Chili Peppers. I mean, right off the bat, they, they're they're just laying out what they're what they are in this track. It's yeah. you know, it's very faith no more and system of a down influenced, um, and you know, it, it's a uh, you know mix. It, but it, of course, it's mixed with some traditional Japanese mm-hmm. melodies in there, which makes it made it interesting. Mm-hmm. I think after repeated listens, I, I found it one of the more weaker tracks mm-hmm. on the album, actually. But oh. it's like it's still a good intro. Oh yeah. Um... There's a lot of Red Hot Chili Peppers in here, too, particularly the bassist. I mean, a lot of bass players are very influenced by Floyd. Um, True. And right. whenever now this drummer comes in, the woman, it gets very poppy. Yes. She just has this kind of tip, classic kind of Japanese, you know, pop voice. Um, right. Great kind of anthemic double-timed chorus. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of your, it's kind of the opening statement. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, on to track two, Zetsubo Billy, Billy in Despair. Love how heavy this one starts off. Yeah. It's just pure metal. Um, love the kind of moody mid tempo verse. And then. And I'm kind of thinking it, as it's you know starting, like, ah, oh, they're just doing kind of the Lincoln Park cadence kind of thing. And then. And then that breakdown happens. Yeah, and then Daisuke <laughs> comes in and it just gets real loud. And I'm like, oh. Oh, I think I'm going to be at home here. <laughs> <laughs> and then another great catchy chorus. They're really good at the hooky choruses. Yes. Um, and then it works its way back to it. Not in an obvious build, but you're kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, wandering around a bit yeah. in this kind of other heavy, dark world. And then it comes back to the chorus almost unexpected. And then that that moody kind of you know a Lincoln Parkish part comes back, but now is singing it, yeah, and it gives it a completely different feel. Um, and then we get this insanely heavy breakdown, and I love the bass tone over the whispered parts. Um, and Daisuke's rapping was yes. very impressive. <laughs> um, he's fast. <laughs> yeah. And and then we get more now, and and her voice just with this ridiculously heavy music just adds this little pop element. I think yeah, they are very system. But the thing that's because I was listening to actually System's last album because it was the released closest to this two years apart. Um, yeah. The difference is that Maximum has a sense of humor. <laughs> well, I think like, like I said before we started, I think this is a lot more closer to. Their first album, okay, where there I, is... I haven't heard the first album. <laughs> where there is some absurdity to it. Okay. Uh, I think it was Dave Grohl that pointed it out. I hadn't really thought of it before, of, like, uh, the you know, comparing them to, like, old, you know, like, Genesis. And I was like, really, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just the, the, the pomp and absurdity? Yeah. Huh. On to... I think that was the first one. Oh, okay. yeah, on to the next one. Yeah, on to the next track. Uh, track three, Kuso Breakin', No Breakin' Lily. Shit Breakin', Brain Breakin' Lily. And this is... Uh, wow. This this was just not expected. <laughs> they go ska on this one. <laughs> they go ska. I, I mean, you, you don't even see it coming. You're just like, yeah. all right, they're doing... Uh, you know, there's going to be another metal song. And then all of a sudden, you're, you're in a ska song. And it's just like, wait, What? <laughs> Great groove, though it sounds a bit like an anime theme. Um, it starts yeah. with this music box, which also caught me off guard. Um, right. And then it suddenly switches to death metal. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's 2007, so you're not really expecting ska anywhere at that mm-hmm. point, because yeah. it was kind of done and over with. Well, so the, it, it, for the big ska craze was, but I mean, ska goes back to the 70s. Of course, you know, yeah. Of course. I, I'm a big well, Madness fan. Um, but, well, yeah, but there's just, I mean, there are times where it was done, kind of, you yeah, know? But it, was just... after, it was after No Doubt and that whole big thing in the mm-hmm. 90s, yeah. Um, 
So yeah, you don't expect them to go ska, and then like, Death no doubt metal. kind of killed it. You know, I mean, yeah. before that, you had a lot of cool ska oh, yeah, bands true, like Mephiscopheles and right, right. Bim Scala Bim, and all that. You know, but then you know boss the tones boss and no tones, doubt, kind of, yeah. and then no doubt, and it kind of became oh, that's grandpa music. Great, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna do beer commercials now. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so to see this, I was just like, uh, points for surprising me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. <sorry> notes. <laughs> but then to go to death metal from this like, right. poppy ska song. Right. The only thing that would make this perfection is if they had just combined all of it into one <laughs> verse at the end. I would have been like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, star this track immediately. <laughs> and, and the metal section, it's just like 15 seconds. Yeah. It's in and out. Right. <laughs> which, which I kind of love that. It's just 15 seconds of just aggressive, deep death metal. And then yes. back to the ska. A growl. And then and then back to the ska. And I... wait, what the fuck was that? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Al, so, and yeah, then... Hmm? So I know I'm I'm uh, I'm in for a good album after yeah. listening to this. <laughs> only only issue for me there were some parts that got a little too pop punk. Yeah, I'm not a big pop punk yeah, fan. There's there's so much of everything. Well, yeah, especially in that on that track. Yeah, there was yeah. like a power pop kind of thing going, yeah. and then the ska, and then the metal. Yeah. It, it just they actually do if you really look at the album as a whole, they do different pop from different eras yeah, true true like and that was kind of a a, a zeros thing mm -hmm. and then you know we'll, we'll move forward with yeah. <laughs> as we go along on we'll, the track four we'll the others. on the track four louisiana bob love the two different distorted sounds in two different ears like two different kinds of distortion one in each ear love that great kind of insane metal verse and then back to the catchy clean chorus really great rapid fire rapping yeah this is this is more like mr bungle than faith no more <laughs> actually um love the deep Where it's, it's more serious and harder and yeah, the yeah. rapping is just more frantic uh -huh. love the deep clean bass tone in the bridge because a lot of times it's distorted but here he goes full clean and the chanted vocal that was really fun and and there's so many vocaling styles yeah. going on too well because there's like, three vocals. the same verse yeah um, and I can't believe how high his goblin voice can get. <laughs> like, Search uh, Takedian does that, you know, a bit on that one system of a doubt, just for a little bit. <laughs> Daisuke does it every song, just about. And yeah. I, just, I don't know what I love about that voice, but it just gets, I just love that. Voice. It's just so insane. <laughs> And this one's a lot of fun. It's it's almost like a Weird Al song in a way. I mean, mm -hmm. there's just so much swirled in. Yeah. Like you could pick out some country, you could pick out traditional mm -hmm. Japanese, and of course, a lot of metal. Yeah. On to track five, Policeman Benz. Love the quiet, kind of syncopated opening riff. Almost great whisper yeah, vocals. It's, it's almost like an Eddie Van Halen kind of riff, or like an mm -hmm. Iron Maiden kind of yeah. intro. And then there's great dynamics with the vocals. It goes from whispered to like, you know, grunt, death grunts and everything in the middle. And then there's a really nice punk section. You know, they're only in one more style. Um, some great surfy drums when the, the opening riff comes back toward the end. And then it just ends with pure chaos. Yeah. I mean, the, the song is just chaos. <laughs> Track six, Black Yen Power G-Men Spy. Great groove in the beginning. Um, sort of a rubbery guitar tone. Love that. Um, love how high the bass is in the mix. It's another, some more great fast rapping. And then it it's goes... probably their catchiest. Yeah. And then it goes straight up hardcore for the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a short break where there's a bass in each ear. They like split the... Instead of putting the bass down the middle like you're supposed to, they split it to each ear. Really interesting effect. Um, on to track seven, Ak Akagi. The beginning was kind of power ballady, um, but I like the vocal melody in the beginning. Um, and then it just gets incredibly hardcore. Right. This one, I would say, is the most Faith No More-like song on the album. Okay. 
but I mean, you know, even you can't tell you're imitating them because you know it's like nailing jello to the <laughs> wall kind of. You know? we, we were there. Actually, I have it recorded, but I'm probably not going to use it as an outtake. We were discussing what to do next week. A little change in plans, and we were discussing either faith no more or system. And and you were talking about how Faith No More doesn't really have a style. <laughs> no, I mean they they did you know kind of like a Michael Boltonish kind of ballad just yeah. a man <laughs> at the end of, of King for a Day. I mean it's just was that easy? I mean they covered easy. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I mean yeah, they don't really have a almost a, a, unironically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think it was ironic. I think they're just Commodores fans. Um, yeah, or at least one yeah. of them is. But, you know, uh, back to Akagi. I love how you know, it gets super hardcore. And then we get this kind of settle, unsettling off-kill or off-kilter kind of Rage Against the Machine style riff. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good call. Um, and then it cuts a really catchy chorus that suddenly gets really soft. And then back to the hardcore. <laughs> it's it's just absolute stylistic gymnastics. And... I watched a couple of clips, not this specific song, but a couple of others, uh, What's Up People and the title track. They pull this shit off perfectly live. Oh, that's good. You know, it's not just, a, it's just a studio thing. Now, one little issue, I think the burp at the end of this one was kind of unnecessary. <laughs> it's just a random burp. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> On to track eight, Kyokatsu. Translation, blackmail. Love how heavy it starts. Great gang vocals. Um, and then more Demented Goblin. I just can't get enough of that. Um, <laughs> and then there's this soft poppy section. After the Demented Goblin. You, you get a lot of that on this. You yeah. know, you get the, the contrast between the hardcore and the pop. And then the second half of the chorus just goes a little too pop punk again. And then there's a duck sound at the end, which again, interesting choice. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I cut, I think Spotify kind of cut it off a little bit. I was kind of wondering what the hell that was. It was just a random duck sound at the end. Um, random duck sound. Track nine, Bikini Sports Ponchin, P O N C H I N. <laughs> Starts this, with this. Uh, Go ahead. This is my pick for strongest. Really? Interesting. Um, yeah, it's my yes. pick for weakest. Um, Starts with this nice heavy dissonance, like a syncopated riff, nice hat, fast, high screaming from Daisuke. But for me, they were getting a little predictable at this point. I was kind of seeing the formula. It works its way pretty nicely from, I mean, I would say, yeah, they are doing a formula, but I think this one is where it works best. It, mm -hmm. um, to go from the hardcore, and then it kind of gets like a little funky-ish, and then it just goes straight up disco. Yeah. I have a note. I like uh, the high, actually say disco-ish single note guitar part. Right. <laughs> and and this, I think it just works best on this one mm. out of, they, because it's a formula they do use throughout this album. Mm. But this is definitely my favorite use of that formula. Yeah, for me, this was when I started to see the formula. And there's also an issue I have with this and I don't know if it's a Japanese thing, but it's this album and the latest Bandmade album. Um, and a lot of their, some a handful of their more recent songs. There's a lot shoved into the higher frequencies. And it's not the uh, notes being played. It's the way things are EQ'd and the effects that are put on. There's a lot of very high frequencies going on. Um, and I, I have a sensitivity to high frequencies. They wear, they wear out my ears. Um, always had, and aging doesn't help. I'm going to be 40 in a month and... You know, you're the high. You lose the high end of your. Or sorry, forty nine in a month. Um, I was gonna say. I, I mean, I sorry. was gonna lay off. I'm like, all right, if you, you know, I know some women that are like no, no, still twenty seven or whatever for the I'm last gonna, I'm gonna thirty be, years. But no, it, it doesn't help my point to, to lie about that. I'm gonna be forty nine in a month. <laughs> Forgot how old you were. <laughs> but you know, as you get older, you lose the high end of your hearing. And I've never been a fan of super high frequencies to begin with, so there's a lot of high frequencies on this album. There's a lot packed into the upper register, and I think that just got just kind of wore me out. And that this is the point where I'm like, okay, I've I'm starting to have it to get to the point where I've had enough in that respect. 
So that's why I picked it for weakest. On to track 10, What's Up People. Um, love the sound of the drums and the opening blasts. Love the kind of, I, I have gymnastic vocal, but it vocal, but it's two different people, so it's not really gymnastic. Goes back and forth yeah. with Dai with his, Dice, Dice with his deep grunts and this kind of high clean vocal that, that Rio is doing. Um, this would be my pick for weakest. It's, okay. I mean, he's pretty much doing a surge impression here. Yeah, I mean, I they're it. doing the, the contrast between Surge's vocals and, Darren. and the growls. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, Darren has a kind of softer thing he does. And yeah. Right. So they were, it was just a little too obvious mm-hmm. to be here. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it, you mentioned it. Yeah. Cool I do hear, hear it, of... but yeah. Yeah. This um, would nice, be my pick for weeks. Please. Nice, insistent groove in the first part of the chorus. Nice death grunts in the middle. Um, goblin rapping. Yeah. That I love that. Um, like if you listen to the last track on next week's album, remember this mm-hmm. song and like put the okay. two together. They they're like really we're going for that. <laughs> uh, and then it ends with this just incredibly fast section that turns into chaos. On to track eleven. This title is a mouthful. Choo choo, <laughs> lovely moony moony, mora mora, purin purin, boran, nuru nuru, vero vero. Um, the track's <laughs> title is based on an assortment of sound effects in Japanese. Choo-choo, meaning the sound of a kiss. Money, money, the sound of someone squeezing something soft. Muramura, the sound of being horny. Purin, purin, the sound uh, with which large breasts are emphasized in anime. Puron, <laughs> the sound of something that pops out. Nururu, the sound of something moving around in something wet and dirty, and Deronera, the sound of the sound made by a tongue going over something. Um, bear in mind that everything through Muni Muni is now, and then when it gets to Mura, Mura Mura, it's, I, I'm going to say Daisuke. Um, I'd rather think it's Daisuke than Ryo, because Ryo and now are brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this one just, I mean, you had to pick my brains up off yeah. the floor from this one. This band <laughs> will like, do wait, that to you. I mean, it's it's like a metal version of the Grease soundtrack. <laughs> now that you mention it, yeah, that, that chorus, I, I just I say it's hilariously poppy, but it is very Grease. Yes, it's like yeah. a last thing. I mean, just, I was kind of at the point of like, okay, you know, we kind of know what's coming next, kind of. <laughs> and then this happens. It's just like, no, no, I did not see that <laughs> coming. It's it's very Zappa, actually. Yeah, I yeah. mean, he would do the whole like 50s do off kind right. of thing in like very weird ways. And of course, he didn't do it this heavy. <laughs> no, this heavy didn't <laughs> exist when he was doing this thing. No, no, he did not. Did not. Then it gets real loud, just on a dime, and then goes super hardcore on a dime, <laughs> and we get this really deep grunt in the in the hardcore section, and then some sh- more shades of um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Love the chimey bass sound. Yes, there is such a thing as chimey chimey bass. <laughs> and then this nice then melodic. It was kind of like... hmm? Yeah, the vocal, the lyrics on this one, I like had to look up because I was like, "What, what, what is he saying?" Because <laughs> it sounded, it sounded like something he could not, should not be saying. <laughs> <laughs> if if you take like the the sound, and think it's he's speaking English, but he wasn't. <laughs> no, I I didn't connect anything to English. Um, I did pick up a little English here and there. It's a thing with Japanese bands, but I didn't turn that into English. Um, right. So I thought he was saying something that was no longer socially acceptable. The meta to meta? Say oh. I thought it was another the other F word. Oh, that see, I thought that with what's up, people. I thought fucker sounded like that occasionally. And then I, uh, you know, look up. I was like, oh, okay, that's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. Um, but no, um, I the explanation of the sound effects in the title pretty much gave you the point of the song. Yes. Yes. But then, you know, we get this insane pop metal thing with this nice, you know, melodic, harmonized guitar solo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on... it's probably the craziest song of the album. Oh, absolutely. Um, this is, you know, if you want a calling card for this band, this song is it, I think. Yeah. 
On to track 12, Shimi, translation Stain. Love the sludgy opening riff and the gang vocals. And then it just goes hardcore, super hardcore. And then it tones down for this very traditional melody from now. And then back right, to hardcore. A, hmm? Probably, you know, it's close to a straight up metal song that we've heard for a while. Like probably, probably since yeah. the first couple tracks. Um, and after the craziness of the track before, it's just kind of like a, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I picked it for favorite. And I think that's probably why. Because like after all that insanity, it's just nice to be back to some good sludgy metal and hardcore. Um, it is good old metal. And it's not bad. It's just, I mean, it's in a sea of just outright insanity. <laughs> I mean, I, I love the, the the goblin voice panning from left to right, um, like once in the left, once in the middle, once in the right. That was nice. Um, it goes very death metal before going back to now's part at the end. You know, the death metal into that very traditional kind of Japanese melody was a great contrast. And on to track thirteen, Koi no Mega Lover, Mega Lover of Love. <laughs> Very catchy opening section, very poppy chorus. Love kind of the like Ramones feel to the beginning. A little bit, yeah, yeah. Um, love the heavily distorted guitar that comes in after that. More great high goblin vocals. Um, great, fast, clean rapping this time. Um, and then the pop they go for here is some mid '80s stuff. <laughs> see it. it went a little too pop yeah it did go a little too poppy for me in those sections as mid-tempo sections i was thinking more pop punk but you're right it is more 80s yeah those keyboards are just so glossy yeah, yeah. mid to late 80s keyboards right. Right. and they're just and they're just having fun with it every evening you're gonna woo <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's it's almost it's like a heavy version of kiss yeah yeah and then there's a track 14. There's an untitled kind of hidden track at the end, 23 seconds long. I don't think it's on Spotify. No, I didn't get to hear it. And I checked YouTube. Believe it wasn't me, I there either. For it. Yeah. Um, so do you recommend that's it? A, that's a first for us. Yeah, yeah. We had a track that we could not review. Yeah, you oftentimes we're cutting out tracks because, you know, there's like deluxe editions on Spotify. So um, do you I, recommend I, it? I, I'd recommend it, but I didn't get to hear track 14. No, mm -hmm. I'm going to recommend this. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun with this. I needed this, honestly, with <laughs> the horrible things we've been reviewing for Zombie Takeout and uh, last week's. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no. I had a lot of fun for, with this from beginning to end, honestly. I... It's rare to find a new, a good new metal band mm -hmm. that, that uh, to go to for me. I recommend it, but in small doses. I, I, I was bit worn out and kind of bored by the end um it's 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 like a workout <laughs> you know, if you work out too hard or for too long it's just a bit much and this for me was a bit of a workout you know and it, honestly yeah i think i agree smaller doses would even be better actually because the, there's just so much to take in and with you know 13 tracks it it is a lot <laughs> there a long way to go if you listen to a song or two, maybe three at a time, they're amazing. But just don't go for a full album in one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did it three times this week, so. Mm -hmm. That's it for Boo Ikikaias. Uh, Boo um, until next time, and we'll be reviewing System of a Down's self-titled first album. That'll be an interesting um, comparison, because I do remember them having more sense of humor like before toxicity. Yes. Because they get a, that's when uh, they started getting a bit too serious, I think. Well, I, they kind of, although I think the stuff from Steal This Album may, might have been before. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. it, it was a lot of, but but that had a lot of too. That's that's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and was, it has, you know, a lot of weird songs on that too. Yeah, I was skimming through with their last album, Hypnotize. You know, and... They're another band for me that I like in small doses. They're they're great at what they do, or were. Are they, are they still together? I think they, they're coming back together. Okay. I think, I mean, they've done a few songs. They're doing some charity gigs, actually. Okay. I think they're doing a charity gig this Saturday for the genocide, I, you know. Uh, Armenian, yeah. The, the Armenians, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, I think it's not the genocide. I think it's the latest war. Oh, wow. They're trying um, to help refugees for yeah, that. Yeah. Um, But... 
I, I was checking out Hypnotize. They're great, but the album is very serious. Oh, yes. Th- those last two. Well, the last, you know, it was mm. supposed to have been a double album. Okay. I don't know why you split it. Mm. But yeah, it was very serious. So, Except for um, old school Hollywood where they're, you know, mm. talking about Tony Danza playing a <laughs> rock and jock baseball kind of thing. I just was kind of skimming through. I didn't really connect that. But yeah, so it was quite the contrast from this. Um, anyway. Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are.